What up is Marcus? We are going to be going through a week five recap. We are a, almost a third of the way through the season here. There are some different news uh, with concussions that are going to actually affect fantasy football here. Uh, we're going to go through some of the injuries and what to do with Mr. Kenneth Walker if he's available in your league. So we're going to go through that all today. All right, we're going to start off with injuries. We're going to start off with concussions. And, and we had Pat Fire with nasty concussion. We had Chris Olave, who was basically caught a touchdown and was unconscious, it looked like. Uh, I believe you're going to see players that are going to be out for a week. Instead of them coming back and playing next week, you're going to see a lot more of the Isaiah McKenzie-like type players that are going to be gone for a actual full week. So if you have Pat Friermuth, if you have Chris Olave, this is something that I plan on having those players miss the next week. Now they could come back, but especially for, for, for Pat Friermuth, who's had now three concussions in his two years, not even, uh, basically what, 22 games of NFL, um, and he's had three concussions. Now that's a big concern for Pat Friermuth. And it was it was a nasty hard hit as well. So with concussions, uh, please just be prepared, especially in Dynasty, especially when it comes to redraft. Be be ready to to uh, find a replacement very quickly through there. Some of these studs, we're not going to go through a ton of the studs because honestly, what are you going to do with Austin Eckler and Derrick Henry and Dalvin Cook? You're going to be keeping those running backs and those players and even wide receivers. You're going to be keeping the wide receivers. But let's go through some of the duds here. James Conner, a concern again. Uh, it, James Conner is somebody that I am absolutely trying to get away from. Arizona looks like a horrendous offense. And I know that uh, DeAndre Hopkins is coming back, but still, I am trying to get away from that offense. Kyler Murray also does run, and which is going to make that running back level just going to be that much lower. And then you have a little bit of Eno Benjamin, a little bit of Vera Williams. It just seems like it's everybody and nobody. And I want away from that offense. Another one is Zeke. Zeke is another running back that I'm just trying to stay away from. I've seen enough where I'm like, okay, this is going to be a Pollard-Zeke split. And I know that Dak is going to come back. But they really look like a... With even with Cooper Rush, they look like an, a team that is willing to play beat with their defense and just hey, we're gonna score twenty one points. We're not gonna score thirty five, and we're not gonna we're we're not gonna be a, a super porous offense. We're just gonna be a game management type offense, which means you're gonna see a lot of CD Lamb, uh, but you're not gonna see these ton ton of these huge deep routes or anything like that. They're gonna play conservative, and I think that's what you're gonna see when Dak comes back. I don't think he's gonna be a top eight to ten quarterback, and and I think Zeke and Paul are gonna have their games, and I think they're gonna have their games where they're gonna be pretty porous and bad as well when they don't score touchdowns. And so that is what you're going to get from the Dallas backfield. Um, another running back that I that actually you could say pretty much had a dud was Joe Mixon. But I'm absolutely buying Joe Mixon if I possibly can. Uh, the Joe Mixons of the world, I believe, still have a couple of years left of life. It's why I wanted to buy Austin Eckler two weeks ago, which good luck now. I can't buy him now. Uh, quarterbacks that we may have a concern with is, is Joe Burrow. And I actually don't have a concern. This is something that I told people prior to this year, what was going to happen with Joe Burrow. He wasn't going to progress to the next level. I felt like he was actually going to regress slightly with some of those huge elevated games, specifically against Baltimore last year, where he threw for a million yards and a million touchdowns. I was like, that's not going to happen. He had two great games at the end of last year. But besides that, he was a quarterback, low quarterback one. And I feel like that's where you're going to get from Joe Burrow, uh, especially if T. Higgins is having some health issues. Hayden Hurst has been a big, huge, not even surprise, just been a big benefit uh, to Joe Burrow here. Some wide receivers today, make note of Tyreek Hill, walking boot. I expect him to miss a week or two here. They said it's nothing major, but I, I, I just, I, I don't know. I feel like with Miami now having potentially Bridgewater hurt and stuff like that, it's like this could be the Skyler Thompson and Jalen Waddell show. It could be a poor um, – they play Minnesota too, Skull. Um, Minnesota's just getting lucky at who they play. Uh, Miami's a really good team when healthy, but they are not – close to health and maybe maybe Bridgewater comes back maybe Tua comes back um but right now it could be Skylar Thompson and Jalen Waddell um T Higgins also super frustrating zero catches for zero yards it's one of those things that we knew that T Higgins had an ankle injury but against Baltimore's poorest pass defense and what they did against him last year you thought hey this is the time for T Higgins to come back and come with a vengeance or not even come back with a vengeance come back and just put up a ton of fantasy points and that just didn't happen for T Higgins unfortunately 
I mean, if you're somebody that had questions about it or the safety, then you, you, you probably went with a different route. I actually chose Higgins over Chris Godwin, which that didn't matter eventually. It didn't, it didn't affect the outcome, but it still, it still didn't feel great. Um, and then other, uh, Tyler Conklin, the man that I love with targets, zero. He, he literally got nothing, which was super disappointing. But now let's talk about the number one waiver priority. What are you going to do with Kenneth Walker if he's available in 30 to 40% of your leagues? This is the time to burn that waiver priority. If you have waiver priority, this is the time to burn it. And if you have fab, this is the time to unload it. I'm talking 90% of your budget. And if there's a lot of if there's a lot of money out there, then burn it all. Just burn it all. Kenneth Walker will be a RB2 or better. Look at TV Pierce who has shown to be basically a low-end RB1. And look at uh, Brees Hall, who's now turning into form. You now have the entire Seattle backfield in an offense that has been very competent with Geno Smith as of late. Um, and actually has shown to be do well with some of the weapons. And Rashad Penny, in his glimpses, has done well. Kenneth Walker is ready for the taking. This is going to be the best pickup that you possibly could do. Think Elijah Mitchell last year, but this is, I mean, this is the time. Burn it all, burn all the fab. Like the, I'm, I have Kenneth Walker, which is super frustrating. I was like, I'm gonna pick him up right before game time, and then I was like, ah, I just cannot drop. I can't remember what wide receiver was. I was gonna drop a wide receiver. I should have just picked him up. I didn't. Now I have to burn all my fab, and I'm going to, and I'm going to win him. <laughs> I mean, I might not, but I mean, I'm going to at least try. I'm gonna put all the effort I possibly can. So um, that is what, that's what I would do. And there's a couple other options out there too, depending on. James Conner's health, uh, Tyreek Hill's health. We'll see with uh, concussions and stuff like that. We'll see. Um, who, like, we'll get into some of the waivers here once we get another day into our belt. All right? This is Marcus. We will see you guys tomorrow.